Having solid fundamentals for me is probably the most important skill there is in pool or the most important thing that you should work on when you're practicing because it it helps you so much. First of all, it increases your shot making consistency or your shot making ability. Um, on the other hand, it opens or creates shots or gives you the option to, to play shots that you just can't play with bad fundamentals. So your shot repertoire gets bigger, um, the better your fundamentals get. Um, it helps you really a lot in high pressure situations where you really need to rely on your fundamentals, where you really can rely on your fundamentals, which puts a bit of pressure of you. And this is probably why most of the time when I'm practicing, which is, to be honest, not a whole lot at the moment, uh, but when I'm practicing, I'm working very, very often just on my fundamentals. And today I want to show you one of many things I'm doing um, at the moment, which is um, the focus is on following through the cue ball nicely, so working on the follow through and also on the initial alignment. So what you will see me do is uh, we're playing eight ball, we're not focusing too much on the patterns. And uh, if we run out of the pattern, it's fine. Um, here I'm just focusing on the fundamentals. So what I'm doing is, let's try to show you here. So you can see usually I'm doing all of those back swings but this time we're going to do it differently. This time I'm going to do it instead like this. So I'm going down trying to be aligned perfectly and then without any pre-strokes trying to, to be yeah, aligned properly right from the beginning and then also follow through as much as I can no matter what. Even if it's not really necessary on some shots, I just want to um, program my brain, program my body, everything to that follow through because very often also in match situations where pressure is high, you very often tend to decelerate and just poke the ball and completely miss the shot. This is why you can see I'm following through that much even though it might look a bit silly, it's not even necessary all the time, but it really, really helps me to just program that into my mind as I told you, just, just told you. Okay, let's play a nice stun run through. Bumped into the eight ball and looks like it's over. Is it? No, it isn't. Interesting little shot here. I think I'm trying with inside spin to bump into the eight ball. That was nice, but let's look at myself here. Doesn't matter. Let's continue. Because as I mentioned, it's not about the patterns. It's about the initial alignment. And the follow through the cue ball. And of course, I also try um, to stay down on the shot, oh, went which is also something that happens when you're in competition. Oh, didn't you see that coming. Nice shot from Schickling. This happens. Did you see that so Short often? Again. I'm standing Expect up while I'm even corner. shooting. And of course, this also um, yeah, nice will sometimes shot. make you miss the shot. Not every shoot time, to the corner, but sometimes it will make corner. you miss the shot. And this is why I'm also trying to um, yeah, uh, stay down on the shot. shot he played, that bank shot into the properly, six. Follow through. And hopefully make the shot. Okay, looking good so far. Let's try to stun into the line of those three balls where I have options. Well, just a tad too short. It would have been nice. Now I have to work a bit. Slow roll shot. Even on slow roll shots like this, you don't want to poke the ball. It's very important that you're still striking the ball. This is something that's really, really difficult to grasp that you don't, if you want to hit soft, that you don't have to poke the ball, but you can hit soft and at the same time follow through the ball. Sounds crazy, very, very difficult to grasp that mentally and to actually do that, but it will help you so much with your shot making consistency. A bit out of line here. Missed the shot. Had the feeling that I'm going to miss it. Wasn't aligned properly. Oh. This is awful now. I think I have to go for the bank shot here. 
work some follow. Oh, almost, that would have been nice. That would have been a nice shot. But as I mentioned, it's not about getting through the rack. It's actually about just working on the fundamentals here. Long shot. Bit of spin on the cue ball, you could see that, but the alignment was still good. Played it with a good speed. Doesn't matter if you practice. You can see that long follow through, very, very important. And even though, as I, as I just told you, it's not always necessary to follow through that much, especially on slow shots or shots where you're really, really close. As long as you're not poking the shot, it's okay. But as I mentioned, this following through while you're in practice will help you tremendously to program your muscle memory and your mind. Because for most people, it's actually a mental thing that they aren't able to follow through. It sounds crazy that it's a mental thing because all you have to do is just follow through the ball like this. But I don't know why, why it's so difficult. Struggled with that um, a couple of months ago. Couldn't really follow through the ball and this is exactly the reason why I'm implementing this exercise into my routine and why you could do this as well. So here you can see this is going to be a slow rolled one, but I'm still not poking it. I could have just poked that ball and still made it, but I just increased my percentages. If I just stroke the ball. What I also like to work on is my pause on the backswing, as you noticed. I didn't have that all the time. Depending on how much I'm feeling in stroke, sometimes I'm doing it, sometimes I kind of forget. It's not 100% in my stroke implemented yet, but when I'm in practice or when I'm playing friendly matches, when I'm focusing on my stroke, I try to, you can see, do that pass. Okay, we cleared the uh, solids. I think we have to go for the bank here. Nice. Here, once again, I don't need to hit hard, but I still want to follow through. This also, interestingly, um, even though if you're playing with the same speed, following through the cue ball or poking the cue ball will make a difference how the cue ball reacts when you're using spin. So even though it's the same speed, if your timing is a bit different, then the cue ball will react differently without that follow through. This is really important. This is actually one of the reasons why you increase your consistency in shot making. Okay, nice little end pattern here, just done over. Play a stop shot, well, Let's actually stun it into the rail. You can see nicely through the cue ball. Just gonna roll that in. Roll it too far because I was trying to follow through. Here I actually could have poked it a bit more or not follow through that much. But I was still nicely on the eight ball. And you can see initial alignment seems to be very, very good where I'm not stroking the ball. And it's strange. It's, I really have a mental problem that I just recently realized that I'm trying to also work on with this exercise. Whenever I'm in matches and I'm facing shots, yeah, that seem to be a bit more difficult pressure shots. What you will very often see me do, well, this is a bit too easy, but Let's say this shot, for example, on the, on the uh, orange one. What you often see me do is this. Mm, not sure. You can see the difference to what I just did in the practice. And even though I am actually sure on the very first time, I just 
Even though I'm going down for the very first time and I'm feeling actually fine, I just stand up because I'm telling myself subconsciously, this is an important shot, better stand up, make sure that everything is right. And the more often I'm doing this, with the standing up, with the new alignment, the worse it actually gets and I eventually miss the shot. And this is something I'm trying to, to um, avoid in the future, to work on exactly with this exercise. Because usually, as you saw, I'm so quick with the alignment and I'm usually aligned properly when I'm down on the shot. Probably going to miss that one. No, <laughs> luckily not. And usually I'm aligned perfectly. I have the right aiming spot right from the beginning. But my mind just tells me, well, stand up, take some more time. It's a difficult shot. You just don't want to take it for granted. And yes, this of course makes sense, but not if it's forced. Because if you're actually feeling fine right from the beginning and you're just standing up for the sake of standing up, because you want to make it look like you're putting more effort into it, then it's actually harmful. And this is why I'm also doing the exercise like this, where I just have one practice, or not even one practice stroke at all. Of course, I'm not going to do that exactly that way um, when I'm in a match. Of course, I'm going to do some practice strokes if I, have to, if I feel the need to do make the practice strokes. But in practice, you're sometimes doing things differently. And this is very, very important that you become aware of those things or of these things when you're playing in matches. So it's very important to also analyze your matches um, after you're out of the tournament or after you won the tournament. Even doesn't really matter if you won the match, if you lost the match. There is so much to learn from. And this is why I'm always doing those kind of voice recordings that I was telling you a couple of times ago. This is how the Mental Edge course with the 12 key lessons was, uh, was created. Of course, I've summarized it, made a new, new videos for that. Whew, this is really exhausting. Um, but this is something I'm doing on a regular basis. So I'm on tournaments, I'm playing, and after my way home, I'm analyzing what I'm doing. And then I just noticed that I'm always standing up trying to force or to, to basically make a show out of it because I'm just trying to convince myself that everything is right, even though everything was right, right from the beginning. And this is then um, translated into practice, and this is why I came up, for example, with this practice routine. So very, very important skill as a pool player to be very, very self-aware of your game, of your strengths, of your weaknesses, Oh, that was bad, I knew that. Uh, of your weaknesses, what you have to do, what you have to practice. And I would say, let's clear. That was nice. Let's clear this rack with all the balls. And then this should be enough because I'm sure it's not that interesting to see me just running the tables that way. Uh, probably behind the 12, the cue ball stops. We didn't, <laughs> we weren't able to make the, the eight ball one single time. Always ran out of position. And this once again would have been a shot where I would have taken like at least one minute to prepare, to align myself, to actually think it through. And here when I'm in practice, of course it's always a different story if you're in practice, but here I'm actually able, as you can see, to just go down, aim it right away from the beginning. That was a bad shot. Uh, aim it right from the beginning properly. And in a match, I would have taken at least one minute probably. Good recovery shot if you're passing that 11. Oh, no, we don't. But I really work in this one. Miss Q. Doesn't matter. Okay. Let's just play that in with some speed. And 
I'll actually try to make it in here. And I think this, that's enough. It's getting worse and worse. Also something you gotta be aware of when you're losing your concentration, when you're starting to miss balls, when you're starting to slightly get annoyed, to rush the shots, to not focus anymore, then do something else, do, the, do something differently and don't try to, oh, sometimes of course you need to grind through drills, is also part of the practice, but this isn't a real drill, this is just hitting balls. So, come aware of when it's time to do something else. Okay, I hope this was helpful. It was really exhausting, I have to say, and uh, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. So, thank you guys for watching.